going on YouTube? Today we're talking about the Canon 5D in 2022 and why you should pick one up. Let's go. All right, so we're finally talking about the Canon 5D Mark II in 2022. I've been asked so many times to review this camera. Is it still worth it? Should I pick one up? And we're finally gonna talk about it today, and I'm so excited for the video we have for you guys today. If you're new around here, my name's Garrity. I do these kind of photographer to photographer talks where I review cameras, lenses, microphone, everything that goes into being a photographer or videographer. Uh, I try to help you guys out. So if these kind of videos help you, Please stick around and like and subscribe. I have a bunch more content. I post every Friday and I'd love for you guys to be along for the journey. So I had a great opportunity to really use this camera in 2022. I got to fly to Boulder, Colorado and shoot there for about a week and really get my hands on the camera. We're actually gonna jump to that video first and then we're gonna dive into the tech specs and why you should pick this one up and what it's even going for. All right, so let's jump to that video now and I'll see you guys after. Okay, welcome to the top of my 5D Mark II. All the photos you're about to see are gonna pop up with the settings right there on the left. My ISO 640, aperture four, and I'm shooting one 640th of a second for my shutter speed. We are in beautiful Boulder Falls, Boulder, Colorado today. Uh, I'm shooting on the 5D Mark II, like I said, and I'm shooting with the 17 to 40 L series lens with the constant aperture of four. Uh, there's another great shot. The place is just beautiful. I don't think there's any bad angles. So there's one landscape, one portrait style, just to give you some different perspective. We are slowly hiking towards the actual falls themselves. I'm um, just trying to get a good angle right now with the mountains behind them. So I'm switching into portrait mode so you can actually see that. There you go. And I'm shooting, now I changed my shutter speed to one one thousandth of a second just because of the way the lighting was. I didn't want to blow out the mountains behind them too much. So I wanted to kind of preserve the highlights. Since the 5D Mark II has great dynamic range, I'm able to preserve the highlights and bump up my shadows enough so I get everything exposed properly in post. So here I'm actually noticing my friend admiring the falls. So I actually wanted to get a shot of her watching the falls. So there you go. ISO 1000, shutter speed is now 1 800 of a second. My aperture is still at four. Uh, I think that's enough because I still wanted to get a shallow depth of field there but also keep what I want in the picture in focus. That's why I left it at four. So here we are changing a couple of more settings here. Let me get one shot of her. Now she is really the focal point here. I bumped my ISO down to 640 there since it was a little bright on that last image, but I'm able to correct it in post to make the image the way I wanted it to actually look. So now I'm attempting to take a long exposure. I do not have a tripod, I don't have an ND filter, so I am really not making it easy on myself, but I saw the shot and I wanted to take it. So the settings I'm using right now are ISO 100, aperture 14, and one fifth of a second. So that allows for the water to look like, it's almost like a blanket, honestly. So I'm gonna try it in portrait mode here and actually bump my aperture up to 18 to make the image actually a little bit more dark. That's where an ND filter would come in clutch right there. So I can have such a slow shutter speed at this time of day to make my image more dark. So it allows more light. So the actual water flowing allows for the long exposure and to give it that special effect that long exposures give. All right, so I hope that video was helpful for you guys. Now we're gonna dive more into the tech specs and why I love this camera. Uh, Boulder, Colorado was a beautiful place. I love shooting in Boulder Falls. Awesome, so I really got to put this camera to the test and get a feel for it. And it reminded me a lot of my classic and why I like it with some differences. Um, I noticed that most of my editing style was pretty much the same that I used for the classic in this. So I see why uh, people are choosing this and choosing the classic, but honestly, I think they're both really, really good. You get great quality out of both of them. They're both film-like. It's just, honestly, if you're pixel peeping, you can kind of tell the difference. But for me personally, if you had either of these cameras, I think you would love it if you want that film style look. Now there's downsides to these cameras. I mean, this one came out in 2008. So it's been a while since this camera has been out and now there's all this new tech and autofocus and higher dynamic range and all these new Sony's and the Canon's and Nikon's. All these new cameras have so much new technology in them that it's gonna surpass these old cameras in some ways. 
but in other ways, it kind of doesn't. That being said, that's why we like the Canon 5D Classics, why we like the 5D Mark IIs, these older cameras, and why people are going back to these cameras is because of that look that we're always trying to replicate. What I find what I'm doing with my Sonys nowadays is the quality is so good that I either have to put like a black Promus filter on it, or I have to tone down or like turn down the clarity a little bit because it's so sharp and almost AI looking. You know, it's almost, it's not realistic. And I like that film look that these cameras give to you right out of the body. So depending on what you're trying to shoot, depending on what you're trying to do, this might be the pickup. This might be the way to go. Since you might not want all that definition and clarity like the Sony A7Rs are doing that these high megapixel cameras are capturing every little pore on people's faces. The Canon 5D Mark II or the Mark I might be the better option for you to go with because you don't need to pixel peep that hard. You might just be posting to Instagram. You might be taking portraits. You don't need that all that quality on their face, that 42 megapixels, 50 megapixels, just seeing their pores, it's not gonna do anyone any good. So that's when I'm usually using a black Pro Mist or I'm turning down the clarity somewhat. I'm smoothing out the highlights, trying to get some sort of smoother face, not so clear. You don't always want more clarity unless you're doing like high quality macro shots or different situations where you might want that. I found that the 5D Mark II did a great job with quality wise, but it wasn't over the top that I feel like I had to tone things down like I usually have to do with some of my Sonys depending on the work. So just to recap this camera, it came out in 2008. It's a 21 megapixel camera and it came out around the price of $2,700. Nowadays, you can get these things for a steal. I'm noticing on Facebook Marketplace and eBay and around there, it's around $400 to $500, depending on condition and a bunch of other factors. But $400 for a full frame Mark II, uh, if I was just getting in photography and I wanted to learn how to use an actual DSLR, I would be picking up either the 5D Mark II or the Mark I. Now, if you're into video, that's where I think the 5D Mark II is gonna really shine because the 5D Mark I doesn't even offer video. So the 5D Mark II does offer video, it's 1080p. There's a lot better options nowadays with the 4K and all these other, even 6K, 8Ks, all these Ks. 1080p is still really good. You can still get some great quality out of it. Uh, you can learn the fundamentals of videography, especially with the DSLR, and really just get honed down your skills with the 5D Mark II and take killer photos. So it's kind of like the best of both worlds. With that being said, there's also firmware updates that allow it to shoot 4K upscaled. There's better YouTubers that can fully explain this, but there's this program called Magic Lantern. Again, it's a firmware update that you plug in and it allows for the sensor to actually read out an upscaled version of 4K. I'll let someone like Zeke, this great YouTuber that specializes more into the Magic Lantern, he has a bunch of videos on it, let him explain it. Definitely check him out if you're looking to get the most out of your 5D Mark II and you wanna play around with different firmwares. Uh, just be careful, you know, there's, it's not ever 100% safe, you know, just definitely do your own research, but also check out his channel and see what he's doing because what he's creating with these cameras, it's, it's pretty crazy. It's really good quality. You can get some really clear images out of the 5D Mark II, but what I like them for is for the fact of how creamy the photos look, whether you're shooting portraits, landscapes, it's almost like a dreamlike feel that it's film-like in its own sense, creamy. Those might not be the best words to describe it. That's how I'm describing it. But that's why I prefer to shoot with these kind of cameras over the Sony's or the newer cameras is because of how dreamlike and film-like and almost timeless it feels. The dynamic range compared to one of the newer cameras isn't gonna be as good. You're not gonna be able to manipulate the, the shadows and the highlights as much. So what you see in camera, I would really dial that in as best you can before you go into post editing because you really can't manipulate as much as you want to with like the newer cameras. The dynamic range in the 5D Mark II is still great for what it is but try not to overexpose or underexpose by much because you'll really start seeing the image start falling apart if you're doing some heavy editing. Keep it safe, keep it clean. Uh, don't push the image too far. And like I said, make sure it looks good when you're taking the photo and make your changes then because when you're in post editing, it's gonna be a little bit harder. You're not gonna have as much play as you would with the newer cameras. Now the 5D Mark II doesn't have the best autofocus nowadays. There's only nine autofocus points, but that being said, as long as it's not super dark out and you're not trying to do anything crazy with the autofocus in general, uh, it does just 
it does just fine. It does, it gets the job done, no problem. I actually got to shoot with the 24 to 105 L series lens, uh, F4. And I'm gonna post some of those photos right now. Here's some shots. These were also in Boulder, Colorado at the Flatirons. The photo quality out of this camera is great. I love it. These are obviously edited with my presets and my edits, um, but I was still able to manipulate the colors and do what I wanted to do to get the most out of the image without it falling apart. There's plenty of dynamic range still that I felt comfortable with that I wasn't gonna ruin it. So all in all, the 5D Mark II is still a great camera in 2022. Try to find a good deal, save some money and get some good quality glass so you get the most out of this camera. So you can check into things like Magic Lantern and stuff like that to actually get even better video specs if you're looking to do video. There's different options, different paths you can go with this camera. It's a workhorse. The thing is still great. I know professional photographers still using it. You can still kill it with this camera in 2022. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise. Uh, prove them wrong either way. You don't always need the newest best thing. That's why people are still talking about this camera. We're still using it. We're still going back to it. And I hope you guys like this photos and I hope you like the video. Please like and subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next one.